Good evening and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. This meeting of the Sioux Falls City Council will begin in a few moments. The City Council meets on the first, second, and third Tuesday of each month at 7 o'clock p.m. and serves as the City's policy-making and legislative body. Each meeting is governed by Robert's Rules of Order unless those guidelines conflict with City Ordinance or Charter. City Council meetings offer an opportunity for citizens to speak directly to their elected representatives. Those in attendance are invited to address the Council during the public input segment at the beginning of the agenda. At that time, any issue that is not subject to formal action later in the agenda can be addressed. Testimony that concerns a resolution or an ordinance's second reading is only allowed when those specific agenda items are being addressed by the Council. When addressing the Council, citizens should speak directly into the microphones at the podium and state their names for the record after being recognized by the Chair. To accommodate and respect all viewpoints, citizen comments are limited by ordinance to no more than five minutes each. Comments should be respectful and focused on providing new information that will benefit the Council's deliberative process. The Chair reserves the right to limit the number of speakers. City Council meetings are broadcast live on CityLink and online at www.siouxfalls.org. Information regarding the City Council, its committees, meetings, briefings, and members is available by visiting www.siouxfalls.org slash council or by calling the council office at 605-367-8085. Thank you for your interest in Sioux Falls City Government. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. This is a special one tonight, and we're certainly blessed to have everybody here in attendance tonight. And certainly, for those of you that are watching on TV, uh, we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, this will be one you will not want to, to miss. Today is Tuesday, May 10th, 2016. Uh, we are at Carnegie Town Hall, and uh, for the last time for at least four of these, uh, uh, these leaders, we are going to introduce you to your city council. Council members Karski. Here. Kylie. Here. Rolfing. Here. Staggers. Present. Anderson. Here. Erickson. Here. Erpenbach. Here. Jamison. Here. Thank you very much. Uh, as this council knows and the city of Sioux Falls, uh, we start our council meetings with an invocation. And uh, not only are we going to say goodbye to four councilors tonight, uh, but the uh, pastor who's leading us in this invocation is also going to be saying goodbye to Sioux Falls. Uh, I've had the pleasure uh, of working with Pastor Dwayne and his wife Jackie Williams for uh, quite some time. Uh, they've been in the city of Sioux Falls uh, since the year 2000, and now they're going to continue life's journey at First Baptist Church in Huron starting in June. Uh, so Pastor Dwayne Williams will be leading us in that prayer, in that invocation. We'd ask you to stand for that prayer. And then remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Dwayne Williams, thanks for the impact you've had on Sioux Falls. Thank you. Let us bow. Most merciful God, we come to you and our hearts are grateful because you have wonderfully blessed us as citizens of Sioux Falls. And we are a city in flux. We're in a time of transition, oh God, as you know. But one thing that we know that even though things change and leadership changes, one thing that remains the same is that you are God and that you are in control. So we beseech you for your blessings upon these council that are leaving this, uh, this city, uh, this service. We beseech you for your blessing, for wisdom, for those that remain. We thank you for the citizenship, Lord God, who contribute regularly to advise and we believe oh god that sioux falls is prospering because of your grace and your love extended to us and we're so very grateful guide us according to your will give the vision for the continuance of this city may it prosper and may all of its citizens prosper and may we enjoy the blessings that you have bestowed upon us and share those blessings 
with the communities that surround us. And may you be honored and glorified through our service to you. We ask these blessings in the mighty and matchless name of your only begotten Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Carnegie Town Hall. It's uh, certainly an honor to have you all here. I'm certainly blessed to have uh, this, this many in attendance. It's, it's just wonderful. Before I turn the uh, microphone over to Council Chair Ken Anderson, Jr., I do have one proclamation that I would like to read on the city's behalf. But if I could, uh, if I can get Chris uh, Parsley up here, along with uh, the other folks that are here uh, tonight from the bicycle community, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Um, Chris, are you going to join me alone, or is there anybody else want to join us? Come on up, folks. Welcome. I saw them coming down the street. They made a long trek here, so we might as well join me here. Uh, Chris, first of all, uh, welcome. And uh, uh, we're probably not going to introduce everybody, uh, but on uh, the behalf of 173,000 people that call Sioux Falls home, I do have a proclamation uh, in, in your honor tonight. The proclamation reads, whereas the bicycle is an economical, healthy, convenient, an environmentally sound form of transportation and an excellent tool for recreation and enjoyment of our city's scenic beauty. Whereas throughout the month of May, residents of Sioux Falls and our visitors will experience the joys of bicycling through educational programs, commuting events, or by simply getting out and going for a ride. Whereas the Sioux Falls bike trail system attracts, bike, attracts bicyclists each year providing economic, health, transportation, and tourism benefits. Whereas creating a bicycle-friendly community has been shown to improve citizens' health, well-being, and quality of life, attracting tourism dollars, improving traffic safety, supporting student learning outcomes, and reducing pollution, congestion, and the wear and tear on our streets and our roads. Whereas Falls Area Bicyclists Live Well Sioux Falls and League of American Bicyclists and other businesses and community groups will be promoting bicycling throughout the month of May. Whereas these groups are also promoting greater public awareness of bicycle operation and safety education in an effort to reduce collisions, injuries, and yes, fatalities, and improve health and safety for everyone on the road. Now, therefore, I'm Mike Huther. I am the proud mayor of the city of Sioux Falls, and I do by, hereby proclaim May 2016 as Bike Month. And uh, here in Sioux Falls, and I urge all of you to join me in this special observance and take that opportunity to get out and ride. Chris, thank you. All of you, thank you for being here tonight. Let's give them a round of applause, please. I do have uh, the honor to turn over the microphone and uh, this special occasion to your council chairperson. Uh, his name is Ken Anderson, Jr. Uh, let's give uh, council chair Ken Anderson, Jr. a round of applause. Uh, thank you to the council for this time. Uh, this is something that uh, I can say that I, I love to do because it just shows what kind of city we have. You know, when we hear a lot about children or kids these days on the news, it's probably uh, never something very good. But today I want to honor some uh, youth here that I hope are representing our future of Sioux Falls. Uh, each year since 2006, C-SPAN has invited middle and high school students to produce short documentaries on an issue of national importance. This year, students use video cameras to address the theme, Road to the White House. 
what's the issue you most want candidates to discuss during the 2016 presidential campaign? C-SPAN received over 2,800 video submissions from almost 6,000 students in 48 states in Washington, D.C. Out of those 2,800 uh, videos, 150 videos were recognized. The students here tonight are among those recognized as honorable mention winners. 97 of the 150 recognitions were honorable mentions. And if you children would come up for a moment. And, and I'm gonna ask you just to give your name if you would. If not, I can, I can read it, but I may mess up the last name, so. <laughs> Patrick Gaddis. Clayton Stucka. Kate McCartney. Elsa Madsen. Aaron Bickett. And also there was Jason, Jaden Bartlett. Uh, he isn't here uh, due to some illness. Um, let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Aaron Bickett is from Patrick Henry. And our other four here are from Edison. Uh, each one of them, uh, well, not each one of them, uh, the two boys here did a video, and the two young ladies did a video, and Miss Bickett did uh, one by herself. And like I said, they were all honorable mention. Uh, this is just something that's amazing. Uh, these kids, uh, the knowledge that they have of today's issues, and uh, you know whether it's social media, just regular TV. Um, I saw the videos. I encourage you to go online. <clears throat> they are on uh, our city website. And take a look at, at the videos that these children produced because it's just something that just brings joy to my heart. And I know that the future of Sioux Falls is safe in the hands of young people like this. Um, so I just want to say congratulations again. And I'd, I'd like you all to congratulate them. Thank you very much. Good evening, Jim David, Legislative Operations Manager for the City Council. Tonight, four City Councilors, Dean Karski, Greg Jamison, Kermit Staggers, and Kenny Anderson, Jr., will be recognized as their elective terms come to a conclusion. We will begin by calling each the floor to be formally recognized. Will Councilor Karski please come forward? Dean Karski was appointed as a Northwest District City Council member in 2011 and elected in 2012. Most recently, Councilor Karski served as a chair of the Operations Committee and member of the Audit and Fiscal Committees. Councilor Karski is being presented first with a plaque recognizing his public service as a Northwest District City Council member from 2011 to 2016. And now he is being presented with an encased American flag whose inscription reads, in recognition of Dean Karski for his five years of dedicated public service and commitment to the city of Sioux Falls and its citizens. The American flag was flown outside Carnegie Town Hall on Tuesday, February 16th of 2016. Please join me in thanking Councilor Karski for his five years of service. Will Councilor Jamison please come forward? Greg Jamison was elected as a Southwest District City Council member in 2008 and was reelected in 2012. Most recently, Councilor Jamison served as a chair of the Fiscal Committee, member of the Land Use Committee, Urbanized Development Commission, and South Dakota Municipal League Board of Directors. 
he is being presented first with a plaque recognizing public service as a Southwest District City Council member from 2008 to 2016. And now he is being presented with an encased American flag whose inscription reads, in recognition of Greg Jameson for his eight years of dedicated public service and commitment to the city of Sioux Falls and its citizens, the American flag was flown outside Carnegie Town Hall on Tuesday, March 15, 2016. Please join me in thanking Councilor Jameson for his eight years of public service. Will Councillor Stegers please come forward? Kermit L. Stegers was elected as a Central District Council member in 2002 and re-elected in 2006. In 2012, Councillor Stegers was elected as an at-large City Council member. Councillor Stegers most recently served as a member of the Land Use and Public Services Committee and Urbanized Development Commission. Councilor Staggers is being presented first with a plaque recognizing his public service as an at-large city council member from 2012 to 2016. And now he's being presented with an encased American flag whose inscription reads, in recognition of Kermit L. Staggers, for his 12 years of dedicated public service and commitment to the city of Sioux Falls and its citizens. The American flag was flown outside Carnegie Town Hall on March, or Tuesday, March 8, 2016. Please join me in thanking Councilor Staggers for his 12 years of public service. Will Councillor Anderson, Jr., please come forward. Kenny Anderson, Jr. was elected as a Northeast District City Council member in 2008 and re-elected in 2012. Most recently, Councillor Anderson, Jr. served on the Land Use, Operations, and Public Services Committees, Southeastern Council of Governments, Executive Board, and as a Chair of the City Council. He is being presented First, with a plaque recognizing his public service as a Northeast District City Council member from 2008 to 2016. And now, he is being presented with an encased American flag whose inscription reads, in recognition of Kenny Anderson, Jr., for his eight years of dedicated public service and commitment to the City of Sioux Falls and its citizens. The American flag was flown outside Carnegie Town Hall on Tuesday, March 1, 2016. Please join me in thanking Councillor Anderson, Jr. for his eight years of public service. Thank you so much. Uh, it is my honor and it's my privilege uh, to also allow these councilors uh, an opportunity to at least engage the 173,300 citizens of Sioux Falls uh, that they've served uh, in an admirable way uh, over, over the, uh, the series of years here. Uh, first, I would like to introduce you, uh, citizens, to the Northwest District City Council member. His name is Dean Karski. Uh, Councilor Karski. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just quick, I want to thank a lot of people and um, the city employees and the administration, all the directors, when you get into this gig, you found out what truly quality people we have working for our city here. It, it amazes me and they come to work every day and uh, they 
it's pretty much a thankless job for the most part. So I want to make sure I thank them. We have an outstanding council staff, um, Jim David, Lori Hogstad, Tamara, Denise, Tom, uh, just the, and Dave Bixler, just everybody that we have working on our council staff for our, to, the work that they do and all the help they give us counselors to keep us looking good. Um, the fellow council members, thank you. Um, we don't do this alone. We don't do it inside of a bubble and there's a lot of talking and uh, seven new friends. So I wanna thank all my, my friends. Um, the, obviously the people that elected me to get to this seat, uh, thank all the citizens there and, and um, you, you, my family. Uh, I only brought my wife up. I should have brought everybody up, but I've got my, my mother-in-law, my son, two sons, my daughter, my granddaughter. Um, just want to thank them. It's, uh, so, again, something that you do not do by yourself, so to recognize my family. And um, no specific accomplishments or anything I'm going to take credit for because I didn't do anything. As an individual, I do not do anything by myself. We do things as a council. And uh, we speak as one voice, whether I voted for it or against it, when it's all done, um, we act as a council. So just to um, recognize that. Um, I am proud to say that I feel that Sioux Falls is in a better place than it was five years ago when I began, and I'm confident that it's gonna be in a much better place again in five more years. I um, just want to ask everybody that's here and maybe watching on TV that they stay involved and, and stay positive. Sioux Falls is a great community and takes great people working together to make that happen. So I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity. Sioux Falls. <laughs> Sioux Falls, that was Councilor Dean Karski. Sioux Falls, it is now my pleasure to introduce you to the Southwest District City Council member. His name is Greg Jameson. Councilor Jameson. Uh, thank you. Uh, I always refer to the Southwest District as the number one district of all the districts in the city. Uh, well, first off, I got to uh, I got to thank my uh, wife Beth, who's in the audience, and my kids Dan and Jessica, who are here. Um, They've teased me a lot over the years for being on my phone too much. And a lot of time it's been talking to people out in the audience and other counselors and uh, uh, constituents, of course. And, and it's interfered with a lot of our personal time, but uh, that time is over. And um, so a little less phone for me is good and uh, a little more family time. I wanna thank my parents, Bob and Shirley, my dad's uh, pictures on some of these walls. Uh, he's the one who gave me the inspiration. It's my mom, though, who told me to do it. And uh, so for some of you, you have heard of blame. Um, but uh, I just reflecting a little bit on this whole journey, I would call it, uh, I've really enjoyed all the people that I've got to meet and know, uh, people I would have never met, uh, information I would have never learned. Uh, the directors of the city have been great. Uh, counselors who've come and gone have been great. Um, constituents that I've met and become friends with, it's been great. Uh, it's the people uh, of this community that make it great. It's not buildings, it's not streets. It's the people who live here. <clears throat> Thinking back on, on some of the history here with these counselors and others, uh, I remember when we had a, an economic forum here on a Saturday morning during the recession, and we filled the room with business leaders and community uh, members, and we talked about how to get through the recession and what we needed to do as a community. I remember when we decided to uh, bring Lincoln and Minnehaha County together in the same room at this council for the first time ever to sit down. It's a big deal. When we as a council decided to start meeting with the Brandon City Council because we were merging and getting so close together, it was important to develop a relationship. I remember that. Uh, the Transit Task Force was a big deal that uh, 
is trying to address a major issue in our community and there's still work there that's getting done. But Councilor Karski said it best, uh, we did that together as a council. And uh, you know, not all of it's been pleasurable, I can tell you, but uh, it's been good work. And if anybody uh, you know, could think of or try to remember me in the future, I would hope that they would consider the idea that I, I tried to bring people together to solve problems in the community and work together better to make Sioux Falls a better place. And so if you get a chance to remember me about anything, use that one. Uh, and again, thank you very much. Citizens of Sioux Falls, that was Councilor Greg Jamison. It is now my honor and my pleasure uh, to introduce you to the at-large district. Uh, that is uh, the counselor who represents the entire city, no matter where they live, work, and play. Uh, his name is Councilor Kermit Staggers. Councilor Staggers? Well, thank you very much uh, for that introduction. And also thank you for all of you being here this evening. A very, very nice turnout. On these kind of events, sometimes it's hard to know how many people are going to uh, show up. But it's obvious we have a lot of family members here, which is really nice to, to be able to see my colleagues' uh, family members. And also my wife, uh, June, uh, is here. Uh, she's been very important in my political career, uh, especially when it comes to campaign time. She's out there campaigning and, and doing all kinds of things. And then also my daughter, Ann Kristen. Um, she's also very much involved in politics. But and being involved in politics like this, and also being on the city council, we get to, to um, know many people in the city itself. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, a lot of people uh, let us know who they are too. It's not uncommon in downtown Sioux Falls, High V, or wherever, for people to say something to me, uh, how they appreciate me being on the council. Well, I, I appreciate their kind words, but you know, to tell you the truth, I don't know who they are, but it's still very, very nice because that's an indication of what kind of people we have here in Sioux Falls, very kind people. And also, that's also a reflection of what the city itself as a whole is like. I've lived in many cities uh, throughout my lifetime, and really, there's no city better than Sioux Falls. And uh, the primary reason for that, of course, is, is the citizens here, all of you in this room, plus the rest of the citizens outside this uh, town hall. Um, <clears throat> let me mention that uh, uh, it's, it's wonderful that we live in such a nice city because when I taught uh, state and local government at the University of Sioux Falls, one of the things I would often say at the beginning of the class would be that, uh, you know, what's the most um, impactful government uh, on your life every day? And of course, many people would say, well, obviously, it's the national government. Well, because on the national news, that's all we hear about, isn't it? But once in a while, somebody would say, hmm, the state government in peer, especially when it's in session. But I told them those two answers are not correct at all. The most impactful government on all of you tonight and also throughout the city of Sioux Falls is city government. Now that's not very commonly mentioned. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever heard that before, but think about it just for a moment. When you get up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Well, you go to the bathroom and you brush your teeth and, and get prepared for uh, uh, going to work. What are you using? You're using water that was provided by the city of Sioux Falls. It wasn't provided by the national government, provided by the city of Sioux Falls. Then you, uh, some of you in Sioux Falls, you uh, get your breakfast, you have your toaster and you put your bread in the toaster uh, to prepare it. Well, in Sioux Falls, there are some residents of Sioux Falls uh, that, uh, 
uh, get their electricity from the city government. And then you go out to the car, start the car, drive out of the driveway onto the street. Well, I think we all know the streets are owned by who? Well, the city of Sioux Falls. So, and you drive to work. And there are probably other examples of how the city impacts you just as you're going to work. But there is a lot of truth to the statement that city government impacts citizens more than probably most of the governments. <clears throat> well, now to help carry on the a tradition of city government here in Sioux Falls. Next week, we're gonna have four new people uh, taking the oath of office uh, as uh, a city council member. And uh, I know most of the four members. And uh, I guess the one thing I can say right now is, is that I'm probably gonna be watching Channel 16 a lot. <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting city council. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. Having said that it's going to be interesting, at the same time, I think it's very fair to say it's going to be a very good city council. So we, we have some good people following in our footsteps. And having said that, um, <clears throat> once again, uh, I would hope that uh, uh, the new members of the city council would be treated as well as all of us on the city council right now. And having said that, thank you very much once again for coming. Sioux Falls, that was Kermit L. Staggers, uh, your city councilor at large. Citizens of Sioux Falls, uh, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce you to the Sioux Falls City Council Chairman. His name is Kenny Anderson, Jr. Councilor Anderson, Jr. Thank you, Chair. Um, in 1928, my grandparents moved to Sioux Falls looking for opportunity and a safe place to raise their children. Um, they raised eight children here. One of them, my father, uh, was appointed in 2007 to the city commission. There he established some great friendships. One of them, a gentleman named Bob Jamison, and uh, made a great impression on me. Uh, about 2000, uh, after my father had passed, uh, people were asking me questions as I was uh, escorting my aunt down the grocery aisles at High V, and she looked at me and she goes, when are you gonna do it? And uh, that sort of set the fire going. And I wanted to thank her, uh, Francis Lofton, also Bill Gannon, and Ike Hoover, three people who really believed in me. Um, the people of the Northeast District, thank you. You've given me an honor, it's been, uh, just a rewarding experience, um, being able to be a part of this group, looking at uh, the development of our city and making sure that the foundation that was laid by my father, by Mr. Jamison and those that have come before us continues in this city. And I think we can all be proud of this city because the people of Sioux Falls is what makes up this city and what makes us winners. And I'm very proud of my uh, work with my colleagues here today and those that were on the council before us and especially with Greg Jamison. Uh, continuing that friendship uh, has been really important to me also. So as we look at the future, I hope that each and every one of you will stay involved and uh, look at the changes that are happening in our city. Uh, look at that diversity changes that are coming, accept that, and make sure that we make sure that everyone coming to the city experience the same experience that my family has growing up here and living here. And that is a safe community 
of people who welcome people, who say hi when you walk down the street. And to the city employees and administration and Mayor Huther and Mayor Munson, thank you for everything that you've done. Putting yourself out there is not easy and it's a, it's a hardship on your families and we understand that. And then to my mother and my sisters who couldn't be here, they live in Minneapolis, um, thank you for allowing me to do this. Thank you. Citizens of Sioux Falls, that was Council Chairperson Kenny Anderson, Jr. Council Chair, with your permission, uh, should we continue with the meeting? Continue, Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, Council will now move to our consent agenda. Any motions, changes, or discussion? Move for approval, Anderson. Second, Rolf. Councilor Anderson, Jr., uh, who is our chairperson, has made a motion to approve that consent agenda. It was seconded by our vice chair, uh, Councilor Rolf Fain. Uh, if there is no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? <coughs> that is passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Now move to our regular agenda. Any motions, changes, or discussion? Move to approve, Erpenbach. Second, Karski. Councilor Erpenbach's made a motion to approve our regular agenda. Second by Councilor Karski. If there is no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Thank you, Council. Uh, city of Sioux Falls, uh, this city council has made it a, a definite point during their tenure to uh, welcome public input. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to engage the council on any topic that you want. Uh, all that this council has asked is really two things. Uh, they've asked uh, just that you introduce yourself to the people of, uh, of our city, number one, and then number two, they'd ask if you would keep your comments to five minutes or less. Is there anybody who wanted to engage the council? Welcome. Scott Ersman, Sioux Falls. I'd also like to thank the counselors that are leaving tonight. Um, I know we've, some of us have shared many stories over the years. Um, if people think that a lot of things happening on Tuesday nights here at the council meetings, I can guarantee you the counselors have many other stories they could tell you about their service. And always the infamous last line to me on the phone, don't blog about this. <laughs> anyway, I'm here tonight to talk about um, uh, last week's meeting ended with the mayor speaking about public input. And it seems like every couple of months, citizens have to come again and remind the elected officials what freedom of speech means, what public input means to us, and why it's important to us. Um, public input is the only uh, recourse we have as citizens with you as elected officials. Um, I had to kind of chuckle earlier today, the informational meeting, Darren Smith came up here and was gravely disappointed that there, there was a discussion about him with him not being asked to be there. Well, as a citizen, I can tell you, we're, like, we're never asked to be at a lot of these things. Um, so we have to come to these meetings and ask questions a lot. The thing is, is that there's nothing wrong with the way public input is being done right now. Nothing. It's not broken. It works fine. The, each body has the power to do their meetings how they want to. And if anyone's out of line, the chair has the right to pick up the gavel and tell them to stop their testimony or to leave. You can do that at any meeting, at any time. Our meetings are, let's take, for instance, the Minnehaha County Commission. They don't have a limit on public input unless they think there's going to be a lot. Last week, the mayor showed up to the county commission meeting to talk about some of his uh, property he owns and some drainage. And uh, his testimony lasted nine minutes and 36 seconds. They let him go because this information he was given was pertinent. They didn't feel that there should be a time limit. 
in fact, if you look at the city charter, the time limits are, are kind of laid out here. Section 30001, section C. Any meeting of the city council may be adjourned to a later date and time, provided that no adjournment shall be longer period than, than until the next scheduled meeting. In other words, there are no time limits on these meetings. If they're going too long, there can be a recess to take a break for five minutes, or you can adjourn to the next day, or you can plan your meetings better. There's many options. Public input's not broke. That's not the issue. I don't understand this, this, this time limit thing either. Everybody who's up here, and I thank you for your service gravely, but you chose to run for this office, and you chose to be up there. You chose to come to these meetings on Tuesday. You get paid to be here, as well as the directors, as well as the mayor. You get paid to be up here, no matter if that meeting's half an hour or three hours long. Um, many citizens, well, we don't get paid to be here, for one. Um, and secondly, many of us, it costs us to be here because we're here to protect our property and other things. Trust me, there's other places we'd rather be when we're not getting paid. So I don't understand these complaints of long meetings and, and the public input and how they're kind of this hassle all the time, this hassle that you have to deal with us. We elected you. Did you think we were just going to go away after we cast our vote for you? There's a saying that I always, people like to use when they talk about veterans and their sacrifice. Freedom isn't free. I often tell people, besides the veterans who sacrificed their lives and other things, there are other people in this country and through history who have sacrificed through freedom of speech. If it weren't for Benjamin Franklin, who never picked up a gun during the Revolutionary War, we would have never won the Revolutionary War. He was the ambassador to, to France, secured the loans. He, uh, he picked up the pen in the press and believed very strongly in the freedom of the press and the freedom of speech. And that's what gets things done too in our country besides the guns. I always remind people, freedom is free, freedom of speech, speak out, leave, te leave public input alone. It's not broken, it's fine. Thank you, Scott, appreciate that. Anybody else wanna engage the council? Welcome. Bob Colby, Sioux Falls. I want to welcome <clears throat> four of you to the club of which I am a member, a political has-been. You will find that uh, <laughs> will take place after this meeting. Sioux Falls has always been blessed with having people who have been looking to the future, and it's not just because we're talking about this county uh, in Minnehaha, we're talking about the city of Sioux Falls or any of the other political entities, it's had its roots going back into the early part of the last century. And they've been looking for the future and they're trying to make a better community. Now, you will find that, <clears throat> excuse me, that as you, uh, because of your service here, you have an attitude. And I'm not making it a negative. You have a different attitude today than you had when you went on this council. And I hope that attitude stays with you and it's a progressive attitude. You have insight in government, insight you did not have before. You have insights on how it works and you have insights on how it does not work. The government that you've been elected to be part of, and I'm talking about the city, and I could say the same thing about county or the legislature or whatever, is it's, it's kind of like your child. You become protective you want it to grow well. You want it to have a good future. You have acquired a certain amount of knowledge, use it, and use it after you're out of this particular position. And in spite of the fact that you are joining this club of which I'm a over the hill has been, I am reminded of what Mark Twain said, and I'm just as much a part of it as anybody else. He said, politicians are like diapers. They should be changed regular and for the same reason. Ms. Colby, thank you so much. Appreciate it, and thanks for your service. Welcome.
Good evening. I am David Zokaitis, concerned a citizen. Tonight, I am here on a mission of peace. Now, that's something people don't say very often, but that's my mission tonight, mission of peace. And I'm not talking about peace on a grand scale. I'm talking about peace in this room. I've been to a number of council meetings, and I've noticed a fair amount of discord going back and forth in both directions. I think as adults and mature citizens, we can get that to settle down, particularly because we've got a new council meeting. I mean, um, in new members coming into the council. If you want to solve a problem, it's good to understand its origin. Well, I think there's a lot of quite discontented people out there in our citizenry and as evidence of that, we note that Donald Trump is the Republican candidate for president. There has to be a lot of discontent for that man to be in that position. Similarly, Bernie Sanders has made quite a run for presidency. Again, a symbol of discontent. But when people are oh, all riled up and not feeling good, they're looking to let off some steam. So maybe they come here and let off some steam to people who don't necessarily deserve it. So, to address this problem, I've talked to a few of the presenters and said, you know, we could tone it down a little bit. And I've also prepared a, some draft guidelines for public speakers. And um, we don't have time to read the whole thing, but you could uh, just read the highlights there. You know, public speakers should understand their goals and stay calm and focus on one topic and look at the big picture and maybe offer a solution. And uh, my daughter happened to, you know, she's in grad school, but she got a real kick out of, remember that politicians are people too. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it sounds funny, but we're all in this stuff together, so we might as well be reasonable about it. And, you know, practice a little bit, limit to five minutes. I'm checking my watch, I got three more to go. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm hoping that the city can maybe merge a copy of this and plop it on the agenda so that new speakers have some guidelines. And you could put it on the website and you know, help people get going, maybe get a little more public input if people have some idea what to do. Okay, so I'm trying to work with the presenters and get them to settle down a little bit, but I've also heard that maybe this city has done some tit for tat kind of stuff. You know, if presenters come in here and they're getting all riled up and People in the city might get kind of riled up, and I've heard reports that I cannot substantiate one way or the other that some presenters have been the target of special enforcement, shall we say. We don't need that. I've also heard reports that document requests have not been handled as professionally as they could be. Again, we, we, we just don't need that kind of discord. If people come up here and go off the deep end, then city government tends to deal the same and you get back and forth and we don't need that. What we need is people who want to work together in peace and make for a, a better government. And with that, as normal, I'll bid you a good evening. Thank you, David. We appreciate it. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. This is kind of hard for me because um, I've never had to address the council, but I am just Pam, your... if you could just state okay. your name, please, and then... My name is Pam Fargen. Thanks, and, Pam. Um, this is regarding an agenda to change my street address. Um, I know that I'm not opposed to going forward with changes that are good for the community, but this one truly is impacting five houses, and I watched the water tower go up over time. Pam, I lived is, through it, that. is it an agenda item later on? Yes. It is. It, well, first, oh, it's first, then you continue. Go right ahead. Thank good. you, Pam. Um, I really feel at this point that there's five houses that are impacted. Three of the five houses that are on this street that you're trying to rename, which is the whole purpose of me coming tonight, is um, <clears throat> because of a safety issue. You wanted to, to rename our street. Um, I actually am the widow of the, um, the one family that had to call 911. I lost my husband less than five to six months ago. And the only reason that they were not able to get there in time is because in a state of panic with me holding him in my arms, I was so confused at 3.30 in the morning, I gave them my old street address on the west side. But then I corrected that and told them the correct address within a minute later, and they did show up. 
And in fact, when I left my everyday job at the mall today, I Googled to see if, in fact, it would be a problem for um, them to make it to my house for fire and ambulance, which is the reason they felt they needed to change my street. Um, this would, in fact, impact me so much, I've already gone through a lot. I buried my husband and my mother-in-law in the last five months. I counted last night when I was having tea, and I would have to change 314 different documents that impact my life. Let me just quick run through a bit. But anyway, when I Googled it, it drove me directly to my house from my work, and I had no trouble finding my home. So I know if the ambulance companies do use that or the fire department, they would have no trouble finding my house. So that that they said would possibly be an issue is not, in fact, an issue. Um, I would have to change my light bill, my water bill, my garbage bill, my property tax bill, which would probably cost me money, or I don't know, my debit card, my Yonkers card, <clears throat> my Old Navy, my city, my Wells Fargo, my Macy's, my Target pension, my Social Security, my doctor at the clinic, my orthopedic doctor, my health care through Obamacare, through Avera, my AAA, <coughs> my Costco, my Kohl's, my property that changed that I have to pay for in the next half, which would probably, <clears throat> I don't know if there's a fee to change that, that there might be, so that's out of pocket for me. All of my family members that are coming to my daughter's wedding in two months. Um, I'm very nervous, I'm sorry. Um, all of my friends who would send me a Christmas card. My electric bill, my cable bill, my insurance bills, my employer, my cell phone provider, my six magazine subscriptions, my car titles, my vehicle titles, my home title, my Edwards accounts. I own some property, um, which would it would be impacted that I'd have to go through an attorney to change. My newspaper, my voter information, my dentist, my chiropractor, my pennies, and my church. How many of you people would be willing to do that after you buried your husband? It's just asking too much for the mere reason of changing the street to be more convenient for someone to be there for um, an emergency. The reason, like I said, I'm admitting it was very hard until you've been there in that situation um, that they weren't able to make it was not because they could not find it, but because I gave misinformation, and I have to carry that to my grave. But he was a good man, and I know if he was alive, he would support me in fighting this. And of the five residences, three of us are single women that are either widowed or whatever, and this is greatly going to impact our life. And I don't need this kind of stress. And when my daughter's wedding comes up in two months, all the remits, everything, it's just a nightmare. And I don't know any of you that would want to contact on your days off, 314 people to tell them otherwise. Thank you. This thank you, my, Pam. Thank this you. This is we my neighbor, Rhonda. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm Rhonda Dangle, and I'm another neighbor that Welcome. this um, street name would, a change of the name would impact me. So um, I agree with everything Pam said, and it'd be a lot of work, a lot of um, work to get everything changed, our address changed, and... Um, if we could rethink the, the renaming. Thank you. Rhonda, thank you as well. We appreciate it. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. I just want to thank the four city councilors. Yeah, we... Tim, we, would you just... Tim Stanga. Thank you, Tim. I want to thank the city councilors for putting up with us for eight years. I know we might not agree all the time, but we don't disagree all the time either. Um, Kenny, thank you for being a representative in my neighborhood. I know that we do just agree sometimes, but we do agree and we're able to talk after every meeting. That's the good thing. Um, one thing that I am very adamant about is I'll stand up for the people that have made Sioux Falls for what they have and that is the elderly people. It's, I'm very passionate on standing up for them, and I just want to let you guys know, yes, I did get a little bit maybe excited last week, but I'm very passionate on standing up for the people that have made Sioux Falls the way it is. And uh, I, I just want to be the voice for these people. 
And one thing that happened this weekend is I went out and mowed my yard, and there's been a car that's been sitting on the side of my road for about three months. I went and looked at it, no license plates on it or nothing. But there's a homeless guy. That's where he sleeps. That's his home. And uh, he has no place to go. Yeah, the, the car is still sitting there. Nobody wants to call it in because where does the guy go? So I don't know if the city can do something for him or whatnot, but the car sits on Whalen. And uh, he sleeps in the car every night. He stays in there during the day. And uh, maybe we can do something for him. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. Bruce Danielson. I'm one of the five the mayor referred to last week. And I just wanted to do a quick uh, thank you to Kermit, who brought me into city politics. Uh, with the help that he, you know, y'all can blame Kermit for me coming up here, I guess. And, and then there's Greg Jamison, who uh, has helped me on several of the issues that I've had with the city over the last few years. Kenny, you know, you've done a good job helping get answers, and, and I talked to Heath today, and we're going to get the numbers yet on that street, and I really appreciate that. The neighbors have asked me, and and Dean, thank you for, for being part of this process, and and I hope that the four that remain uh, will take and will take our calls, because we we really don't come up here to just cause problems. We see things, people ask us things. The more we're up here in front of of the council and we're out about town, people ask us and point out things to us, and we're always trying to bring things to the council that because some members of the council haven't been very good about returning phone calls and email messages, we're going to keep coming up here. And this is a big part of why we have citizenship in this country. And we really love coming up here and talking about it. Looking forward to all the new members coming on board. And we're going to indoctrinate them just as well as we've indoctrinated you to us. So thank you. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? All right, very good. Thank you so much for your testimony. We certainly appreciate it. We're now going to move on to item number six. Item number six is special one-day malt beverage license for Make-A-Wish Foundation of South Dakota to be operated at the 8th and Railroad Shopping Center parking lot, 401 East 8th Street, for a fundraiser on May 14, 2016, and to authorize publication on April 29, 2016. Good Jamie. evening, Jamie Palmer with licensing. Item six is a special one day request which was received um, in plenty of time but due to an error on my part, it's here before you tonight, four days before the actual event. Um, to meet state law requirements, the item was published on April 29th, which uh, makes it at least one week prior to um, your decision here tonight. So I would be happy to answer any questions. Jamie, thank you. All right. Council, any uh, motions on this item? Approve, Erickson. Second, Second. Council Erickson has made a motion to approve this item. Second by Council Erpenbach. Uh, if there's no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council Members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Item 7. Item 7 is a first reading to set a data hearing and second reading for Tuesday, May 17, 2016, at 7 p.m. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by changing a street name, East Arden Street. Hey. Uh, Kurt Peppel, Public Works Engineering. Um, this ordinance proposes to rename a portion of East 50 57th Street that lies between South Woodwind Lane and South Arden Avenue. Uh, the proposed name is would be East Arden Street. Uh, the alignment change uh, back in 2008, created two sections of East 57th Street. Uh, the, the railroad bridge uh, to the south towards the bottom of the page is the new alignment, um, which the new alignment and then the, the yellow hatched area are both known as East 57th Street. Uh, the renaming was initiated by city staff. Uh, the process has been completed in accordance with 
uh, City Ordinance 30.062, which requires uh, support from 60% of the adjoining owners. Um, we had uh, received 67% of the adjoining owners have acknowledged the renaming and are in support of the change. Um, that would be for the, the six that uh, adjoin the section of 57, East 57th Street. Uh, the City Street Naming Committee has reviewed and is in support of the change. Kurt, thank you. Council, questions or comments? Council Erpenbach. Kurt, can you talk about why? Why did city staff decide that this is, has to be done? Um, I think uh, I wasn't a part of the initial <coughs> conversations, but uh, confusing having two sections of East 57th Street. Um, I think there were some concerns from Fire Rescue, uh, Dean Lanier would, said he would be here next week to talk about that with having not being able to access East 57th, East 50, the north section from the south section. There's no access between those. You have to go up into the neighborhood. Um, so there's some confusion there on how to get to that section uh, from, the, from the new alignment. Uh, Councilor Jameson, sir. Kurt, could you go back? Yes, there you go. Thank you. Uh, so, um, I mean, it's been uh, nine years, or uh, I mean, not, not nine years, uh, eight years, right, roughly? Correct. Um, surely we would have had an incident uh, complaint filed by a homeowner or somebody that requested this. Uh, I'm... I'm I'm kind of leaving, but I mean, the idea is uh, based on testimony we've already received, there's a challenge in front of you with this. And is, I'm just curious, is there any kind of a compensation or consideration for all those individuals who would have to go through and change all of those documents? And is there any compensation from the city for doing that? I, I'm not aware. I can't speak to that, I guess. Okay. Councilor Karski. Bring that map back up again, please, if you don't mind. You said we had to have 60% of the um, adjoining property owners. Correct. To approve. So who all gets to weigh in on that? Which properties all get to? If you um, the adjoining owners would be the, the six shown there, 4804, 2204, 2208, the, the ones that have the yellow addresses. Are up, they are the adjoining owners, okay. and they were all uh, contacted, and uh, four of six have acknowledged and were in support. Okay. Hey, curious. Um, typically in Sioux Falls, avenues have names and streets running east and west are streets. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it's confusing to call it Arden Street. Why, why don't we make it like 57th Place or East, something like that to make keep it kind of consistent with the way the rest of our streets are named? Has any consideration been given to that? Um, I wasn't uh, part of those discussions. Uh, we went with Arden because of Arden Avenue and uh, Arden Circle is just uh, off the map to the north. Um, this we kind of went with that to stay consistent with the area, but it's something that could be considered. Okay. Council, would anybody want to set a date of hearing, a second reading for Tuesday, May 17th for this item? So moved, Rolfing. Second, Erpenbach. Councilor Rolfing's made a motion to set the date of hearing, seconded by Councilor, I think it was Erpenbach. Councilor Erickson. I just have um, a quick question. Looking at the map, I mean, I, I get what you're saying that they touch <coughs> the property. But 4804 and 4809 are not impacted at all. So for that to be taken into the calculation That's seems a little bit odd to me um, because there, nothing will be changed with them. I mean, I, I just, I get Ordinance, uh, it's an adjoining. Right, I get it, but it yep. seems a little bit odd to me with that. The other thing is, is um, I would encourage the, the gals that came today to come again next week, because that's second reading, um, just to make sure that you're aware of what's going on. And then I have one probably really dumb question. How long does it take for 
Google Maps, all of those type things to catch up with the street address and the street name. Because I, we built a house two years ago and Google Maps still doesn't know where my street is and can't find my house. I have to give directions to everyone every time they come to my house. So are we, are we fixing a problem that maybe doesn't exist with that? I, I'm not sure what, what the timing would be for Google to catch up. Uh, well, or any, any type of directional type thing. I mean, sure, it'll be on the city map, but I mean, if, if I'm going to play cards or having a cup of coffee and I'm going over to her house, she's going to have to give me, oh, it's the old 57, type that in, it will come up on your app. And that kind of defeats the purpose for that, for this instance, if it was mm -hmm. done for safety reasons. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I have a little bit of concern with that. Councilor Anderson, Jr. I've seen something like this on the east side of town by Cactus Heights where uh, our first responders weren't able to find a street because it was set back and there wasn't very good signage. Um, the, <clears throat> the grass property between uh, the street and, and 57th, that's, uh, is that owned by the state, the city? Is that's that, all that's city be right of way. Non-developable property, correct? City right from the new alignment to the um, the the south property lines of the yellow addresses. That's all city right of way. It's uh, if you can picture going up over the railroad bridge, there are pretty good slopes that go down, and then there's some drainage and things that that happen in there. Okay, and. It, this is gonna to go to a second reading. Are we going to have people here who were in the conversation? Yes. Uh, um, this name and everything? Yep, I, I talked to uh, Dean Lanier with uh, Fire Rescue today. He will be here next week to, to talk about um, some of the concerns he has with the way it is now. And, and we'll have uh, more representatives from engineering that have been in the process. Okay, and how was this initiated? Was it initiated through engineering, through planning, through uh, fire? I think a, a combination of um, just looking at some of the streets that that we would consider renaming, which is a, a, a some folks from engineering, planning, um, fire rescue. Um, we just, we talk about them on occasion, and this was one that we thought was time to to take a look at. Definitely would want to have all of them here on that second reading so that they can answer those questions that the council's going to have. Okay. Thank you. Great, Council Chair. Thank you. Kurt, thank you as well. A roll call vote, please. Council members Karski? No. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That has passed 7 to 1. Thank you, Council. Item 8. Item 8 is a first reading. Feedback. To set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, May 17th, 2016 at 7 p.m. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota amended the Code of Ordinances of the City by revising Chapter 111, Restrictions on Issuance of Malt Beverage Retailer Licenses. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilor Erickson. Thank you. Sorry, I was trying to communicate right. here and take care of that. Thank you. Um, this, this is the first reading. and. Um, we've had lots of conversations recently. It's really in response to Rick Law versus City of Sioux Falls, um, uh, decided by the South Dakota Supreme Court on September 21st, 2011, basically stating that we cannot regulate video lottery and it's preemptive. Um, and so the ordinance that we had on um, the books either needed to be repealed or changed. Um, and so this would make those changes to remove video lottery from the um, ordinance and allow still um, clear and distinct separation between malt beverage licenses. Councilor, thank you. Is there any other comments uh, or would anybody like to set a date of a hearing motion. and second reading for Tuesday, May 17th? So moved. Second, Karski. Councilor Erickson's made that motion, seconded by Councilor Karski. A Roll call vote, please. Council members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. <laughs> Item 9. Item 9 is a resolution approving the release of part of a permanent easement located in Tract 1, Garden Village 2, addition to the City of Sioux Falls, Lincoln County, South Dakota. Uh, Kurt Peppel, Public Works Engineering. 
Um, this drainage easement uh, to be released is located in the Garden Village 2 edition, which is near South Minnesota and West 85th Street in the northwest quadrant of that intersection. Uh, a new drainage easement meeting city standards was established in uh, March of 2016, which runs north and south, uh, the blue hatched area uh, in the middle of the page along the property line. It uh, divides the property line. The, the yellow section that is currently in place is no longer needed due to the, the new easement that was established and all the drainage will be uh, directed into the new easement. The owner has requested the easement uh, be released. Uh, yet the petitioner, <clears throat> sorry, the owner has complied with the engineering easement release procedures. Uh, there are no public or private utilities um, in that portion of the easement. Engineering is in support of the release. Kurt, thank you. Is there anybody in the audience who wanted to speak to this particular item? Councilors? Move for approval, Anderson. Second, Karski. Council Chair Anderson Jr. has made a motion to approve this resolution. Seconded by Councilor Dean Karski. If there is no discussion, a roll call, please. Council Members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Thank you, Council. That is passed 8 to 0. Item 10. Item 10 is a resolution approving the release of part of a permanent utility easement located in lot 18A, block 1 of Tucson Club Estates Edition to the City of Sioux Falls, Lincoln County, South Dakota. Kurt? Uh, this um, subdivision is near 80, West 85th and South Louise. Um, it's the result of the easement's uh, near the mid-lot line. There was three lots, lots 16, 17, and 18 were replatted into two lots. Uh, the easement, when, at, when it was established, was right at the property line, but due to the replatting, it's now at, at mid-lot. Uh, the owner has requested the easement be released, uh, has complied with the engineering easement release procedures. There are no public or private utilities in the easement. Engineering supports the release. Kurt, thank you. Is there anybody in the audience who wanted to speak to this item? Councilors? Move to approve, Erickson. Second. Councilor Erickson has made a motion to approve this resolution. Second by Councilor Ander uh, Council Chair Anderson, Jr. A roll call vote, please. Council Members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Item 11. Item 11 is to set a hearing date for Tuesday, June 14, 2016 at 7 p.m. A proposed resolution vacating a portion of the North Whitney Avenue right of way. Kurt? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this right of way uh, to be uh, proposed to be vacated is just south of West Madison and North La Mesa. Uh, it's in the um, Songbird edition on the pretty much the west side of Sioux Falls. It's kind of hard to see in that picture, but it has a, the circle around it. Um, it's just a, a small uh, section of right of way. The petition uh, was prepared and submitted by Darren Haar, which is part of the ownership group that owns uh, everything out there. Uh, the petition was signed by the adjoining property owners pursuant to South Dakota Law 94510. The petitioner has complied with the street vacation policy. Um, it's not currently improved. Uh, no, uh, a neighborhood meeting was not required. If the vacation is approved, a utility easement will not be maintained in the, in the yellow hatched area. Um, approval of this, uh, like I said, we'll just clean up some remnant right away. They're, they have some redevelopment plans out there for additional residential lots. Um, also, approval would help um, access from Whitney over to La Mesa. The green area is, is what they're proposing and um, finish out the finish out the cul-de-sac and then uh, going through lot 13 we're working with them to provide a uh, a street out to La Mesa to help improve access uh, engineering supports the vacation Kurt thank you uh, folks anybody want to speak to this <coughs> would anybody want to set a data or hearing date for Tuesday June 14th for this particular item 
So move, Anderson. Second, Rolfing. Councilor uh, Chair Anderson Jr. has made a motion to set that hearing date for Tuesday, June 14th. It was seconded by uh, <coughs> Council Vice Chair Rolfing. If there is no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Item 12, please. Item 12 is a motion to provide advice and consent for the appointment of the Director of Community Development. Bill? Council Bill O'Toole, Human Resources Director. It's my uh, pleasure to introduce Darren Ketchum, the Mayor's uh, appointment for the next Community Development Director. Uh, and I just want to go on record is that I, I did not dispel any myths about the council's secret questions uh, of the candidate. So he's unaware of the 25 questions that you have for uh, Darren Ketchum. So, uh, but it's my pleasure to introduce Darren uh, for your consideration for advice and consent. And obviously, we urge your support. Uh, I've had the pleasure of, of working with Darren on and off since his appointment over at Metro Communications uh, and highly recommend and encourage your support of this candidate. Thank you very much. Council, before I go to your questions, uh, is there anybody in the audience who wanted to speak uh, to Mr. Darren Ketchum? Uh, Commissioner Barth, thank you for staying tonight. We appreciate it. Commissioner? Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, Council Members, uh, Jeff Barth, Minnehaha County, Sioux Falls. Uh, I've, had, I've been a commissioner for 10 years. I was a commissioner before Darren came on board. And I got to say, this is one outstanding fellow. I have had a chance to interview him on some other things, and wow, uh, you, you could not do any any better than this fellow. Um, he has wisdom behind beyond his years, and the fact uh, that he, like I, has been in the military, I was a little worried about that, but he is not, he's more of a diplomat, I would say, than a uh, drill sergeant, and I think you cannot do any better than this guy, so I would urge your support. Thank you. Mr. Barr, thank you for those comments. I appreciate that as well, and I'm sure Darren does as well. Uh, Council, would anybody have any questions, comments of, of Darren or of Bill or of uh, this mayor? Uh, Councilor uh, uh, Jameson, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I served on the uh, Metro Management Council uh, when I was first elected and got to meet Darren then and, and realized uh, he's a solid guy. Uh, he's a real good guy for a lot of good reasons. Strong discipline. Uh, strong leadership, execution, uh, get the job done, plan it, execute it, really good. Uh, I only have one problem, and I told the mayor about this the day of the press release, that uh, the only problem with this appointment is that I didn't get to do it. And, uh, and uh, I'd have to commend the mayor on this selection. I remember one of those meetings, Mayor, uh, you asked me after the meeting, who is this guy? And you recognize right away the talent that you saw. And uh, I, I was giggling a little bit with you to tell you how good a guy that he is. And, uh, and here we are today, you joining the team. And uh, I'm just uh, glad to be here tonight to help that process. Councilor Jensen, I also thank you for those comments. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilor Kiley. I too have had the pleasure, and it truly has been a pleasure, working with Darren for two years now on Metro Communications Council. Um, one, one thing that I quickly recognized about uh, Darren is that he is quick to recognize the work and the value of others, and he gives them credit before he takes credit himself. He's effective, he's efficient, he's a great communicator, um, and he truly understands the value of collaboration. Uh, but most importantly, Darren is a good person. I welcome you to the team. Thank you. Councilor Kiley, I know Darren appreciates those comments, and certainly I do as well. Councilor uh, Erpenbach. Thank you. Many of us have, have or had served on Metro Management Council, Council and know Darren uh, through that. Um, but there are folks listening now tonight who don't know Darren, I guess I'd like to hear from you. Because number one, I continue to serve on Metro Management Council and I am disappointed in this appointment <laughs> because we have to find someone to fill these enormous shoes. And so, Darren, would you talk to us just a little bit about who you are and what you expect to do in this next role that you're going to be stellar at, as we know? But if you'd just talk about that just a little bit for the public, that'd be great. Absolutely. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, 
my name is Darren Ketchum, and uh, with your ad advice and consent, I'll be the next director of community development for the city of Sioux Falls. Uh, it's been my privilege to serve the citizens, visitors, and businesses of Sioux Falls and Minnehaha County for the past seven and a half years as the director of Metro Communications. I look forward to serving the citizens and business of Sioux Falls for many years to come as your director of community development. Uh, thank you, Mayor Huther, for your trust in me and this great opportunity to serve our great city. I look forward to working with the staff at the city, the Sioux Falls Development Foundation, the Governor's Office of Economic Development, uh, and the City Council, and many more partners and stakeholders. There have been many great accomplishments over the past years, and I look forward to building on those accomplishments to make our community a stronger place to live, work, visit, and raise a family. My goal as Director of Community Development is to lead a department that is a valued partner, whether that is in public parking, uh, affordable housing, or economic development. My immediate priority is to assess the, the current operations and procedures and, and projects that we have going on um, while not losing focus and our uh, tempo towards those things. We, uh, we're going to maintain all that momentum that we have going. Uh, I want to review the current parking options that we have and ensure that we continue to move forward creating additional parking opportunities in our core. Uh, as demand for affordable housing changes in our community, we must be proactive and innovative to develop uh, opportunities in our city. And finally, we need to focus our economic development efforts on our current businesses. The large majority of our growth opportunities are likely to come from existing businesses. It is imperative that we work with them to expand private investment in our community. At the same time, we'll continue to focus uh, with our partners and stakeholders on regional and national economic development opportunities right here in Sioux Falls. Focusing on these areas in the near term is important, but we must also prepare for the next five to 10 years and beyond for what our community could like and what we want it to look like. This requires collaboration, leadership, and vision. Working with all of you, our local partners, citizens, and businesses will create even more opportunity in our community. I look forward to serving our community with you. Uh, thank you again, Mayor, for this opportunity. City Council, thank you for your consideration tonight. Um, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to, uh, to get started uh, working for the city. Uh, absolutely, um, I just can't say enough. A little bittersweet to, to leave the, the fine people at Metro Communications and all of our public safety partners, but uh, I feel like uh, we're, we're in such a great place. This is the best way that transitions go is on a high note. Uh, I've always been taught to, to leave things better than you found them. And when I, when I came to Sioux Falls seven and a half years ago to work as the director of 911, um, I worked with the city council, I worked with the county commission, I worked with the mayor, and I worked with all of our other uh, partners in the community and the state. And I feel that we've built the best uh, 911 center in the region. Um, and so with, with your consent, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing with community development. So, uh, so thank you very much. Darren, thank you very much for that as well. And, and Councilor Mbach, thanks for providing again, Darren, that opportunity to explain why he believes he's a, he's a good candidate for this role. Um, if there is no other discussion, I, could I get a motion to provide advice and consent for the appointment of Director of Community Down to Mr. Darren Ketchum? So moved. moved. Karski. That was uh, uh, Councilor Dean Karski provided that uh, motion and it was seconded by Councilor um, Kiley. Uh, if there is no further discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council Member Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Council, thank you. Uh, Mr. Darren Ketchum, by unanimous vote of the Sioux Falls City Council, uh, you have been provided that advice and consent to, to be the new Director of Community Development for the City of Sioux Falls. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. And council, certainly I, I thank you as well for, for that, uh, uh, that support. Uh, item number 13. Item number 13 is a reconsideration from the May 3rd, 2016 City Council meeting. New 2016-17 retail malt beverage license including video lottery terminals for Commonwealth Gaming and Holdings, Deuces Casino 3.5, 5115 East Arrowhead Parkway 
with conditional use permit 4148 2016 being approved on March 3rd, 2016, pending final inspections per fire health and building services. Council Vice Chair Rolfing. Yes, I'd like to make that motion to reconsider um, our vote last week uh, to tonight. Is there a second on that? Erickson. Thank you, Councilor Erickson. I appreciate it. Councilor Vice Chair Rex Rolfing has been a motion to reconsider uh, from the May 3rd meeting, and that was seconded by Councilor Erickson. Uh, Mr. Lover? Or, yep. or, or, or Councilor yep. um, Rolfing, oh, sir? That'd be fine. Um, Mr. Lover, could we have you approach, please? Yeah. I think we have to, Mayor. Do we have to vote to reconsider? Very good. That, very good. Council Members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Jameson? Yes. That motion to reconsider was unanimous. Uh, Council Rolfing, did you want to I'll wave to Council Erickson? Council Erickson, thank you. If you'll lead us on this journey, please. Thank you. Thank I you. didn't realize I was, so appreciate it. Um, the intent was to reconsider based on the motions we made last week that we um, maybe procedurally didn't take them in the right order as such. Um, in doing that, there has been a, another plan that has been introduced. Um, I don't know if we can get that on the screen if we have that. So my question, I, I'm one vote, that's all I am. Here. And so I'll leave it up to the rest of the council uh, as we move forward. Um, we, we can still do the same motions we made last week. We can have the conversation again and make sure that we voted it on uh, in the same procedural manner. Or we can decide that we want to do something different and delay it and say, try again. So I will turn it over to the rest of the council to have that conversation. Um, I have talked to you I've been talking about this for some time, so I will yield my time. And um, Councilor Erickson, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I think I probably need to go to the audience first and then come back to the council now that we know what we're doing. Yep. Thank you, Councilor Erickson. Is there anybody who wants to speak uh, to this item? Welcome. Did you want to speak to this item? No, is no, this, you don't. Well, okay. we'll we'll invite him up. That's well, he can we'll, choose to. Speak. I mean, if yeah, you, you want to speak, you can you can, speak you, want. you can say whatever well, you would like to say. If or the council had questions about the new plan, I was happy to address them. Um, I didn't know if, as far as the the motions that were made, or if there's any questions, I'm here for that. So. Okay, very good. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wanted to speak to this particular item in the audience? Very good, councilors. Any questions, comments, Council Vice Chair Rolfing? Yes. Mr. Lover. Mr. Lover. <laughs> Thank you, Council. Don't go far. We've been, we've been sorry for the confusion, but this has been rather confusing all week for all of us. Um, but I think we've got it down now where we are uh, looking at your plan. You've gone, you've gone halfway to the wall. And um, I think what we're looking for is a wall that would divide the whole thing and would, and would uh, make it so that there are no... Uh, there's no way for anybody, to, it's two separate businesses completely. You put the bathrooms in, you need to do the wall all the way through, and I think you might get some, uh, some okays from, uh, from some of us on the, on the council. And so what, what I would like to do is, um, uh, at, not at, well, at this time, and somebody can shoot it down if they want, is to uh, uh, make a motion to postpone this for one more week or more if you need it, to come up with one last drawing and proposal that would include the bar area. Common bars will not work. Councilor Rolfing, can I uh, just maybe yes. in the spirit of, so you'd like to make a motion to postpone this item for another week? If they will, if uh, they will consider this, uh, this type of a, a plan uh, for that time. Okay, why don't we, there's been a motion to postpone this item for one week. Is there a second? Can, can I? Can I just have one second? With no, my you can't. No, you, you know you can't. There's been a motion to postpone this for one week. Is there a second? That motion dies for lack of a second. Councilor Erickson. Because we're past public input, he can't say what he wanted to say. Or well, we but uh, no, I okay, think you me, can certainly ask let me, him. Let me ask you a couple questions. Thank you. Let there me you let me start over a little bit. We have three options again tonight. We have we can either just kick it out like we did last week, or we can delay it 
which was on the table and may come back, um, to delay it one week if you would be prepared for that. There's clear state law that says that coolers can't be commingled. There's an issue with this open pod concept with employees that the commingling of malt beverages can still occur without clear and concise separate two businesses, business A, business B, completely separate, and they're not yet. Um, I, again, I'm one vote. I don't know what the rest of the council wants to do, but I think that there's a pulse to say, hey, can we wait one more week? Can you come back and show that it is two separate clear and concise businesses and have it approved based on the new council? There's a risk there as well with that new council <coughs> if that plan is, is done. Am I stating that correctly. Um, it, was, it was communicated to us that we can still deny based on suitable person, suitable location, which would kick it out. And, and we don't want to have to kick it out a year. That's a whole year. We, we don't want to have to do that. So delaying it or the suitable location would be a three month, I believe, three months um, delay. Again, don't want to do that. We're trying to work as best as we can with the intent of having two separate, clear and concise locations. Uh, Mr. Leverin, that was kind of a question. It was kind <laughs> Sorry, of a statement. Really. <laughs> it was kind of a leading. It was kind of, it was, but it's encouraging you to do something based on her comments, not only this week, but also last week. Do you have any comments, sir? And can I ask you a question? Uh, you, sure. Why don't you go, why don't you make it part of your comments? <laughs> Am I correctly understanding that everything with the plan is okay except the wall proceeding through the bar? Mr. Mayor. The lack of the wall. Yes. The lack of the wall. Okay. Okay. And we would be ready in a week to come back. Okay. Councilor uh, Erpenbach. I, I guess yes. uh, would you just explain this new plan and how different it is from the last plan. I mean, if, if anybody's following this, which I'm sure it's becoming a game at home, but hmm. if you can just walk us through this new plan and talk about that, how is it different from the last plan and what, what were your intentions with this? Our intentions with the last plan were to have that open area where people could come through so that people could go from one side to the other. There'd be locked doors and cameras to provide security so people just for safety and we thought the patrons would like that more. Um, my understanding was we didn't want that, we wanted it to be open, people had to go outside uh, to go into a whole separate doorway and so we've changed that. Um, from the inception of course, now the only place you can come in is the one side from the uh, deck so we have complete separation and we'd run the wall through last time so no one can come through the back. The goal here with leaving the back of the bar open was just having two people, when you have two employees, say one has to go to the bathroom or something, the other can see and make sure that the rules are being followed, make sure that, um, you know, just safety, service, and all that. Uh, that was the goal of it. Um, we do have separate coolers on both sides, so um, it's not like they'll be grabbing out of the same cooler or anything. Uh, that was the intent, is, is that what you're asking? Yes, it was. If I might follow up, Mr. Please, Mayor. Then, then um, talk to me about this idea. If you were to put a wall all the way through, so there, there's two separate bars, two separate coolers, two separate restrooms, two separate businesses, how many employees would you need then? Um, I'd assume two employees. So one for either side? Mm -hmm. And so that's your proposal now, is even with, with or without the wall, it's going to be the same number of employees overseeing this space. I believe so, yes. Because that's been, honestly, that is that is my biggest concern, is that we're trying to wiggle around the law so that it becomes two businesses with half the expenses. And so um, I, I appreciate at, at the, the attempt at uh, putting the two separate restrooms in. That, that looks, to me, more legitimate. It looks like two businesses then. Um, I guess, uh, um, it, again, with the feeling of the group, I, I'm not sure, I haven't counted any votes or anything, but I, I would be willing if, it, if there were a wall, if it were very clearly two separate businesses with two licenses and two all of it, then I, I would be willing, I would vote in favor of it if that's what the proposal is that comes when we delay it for a period of time to be named later. Thank you for your patience. 
Thank you. Councilor, if you don't mind, is there anybody else on the council who wants to speak? Councilor, uh, uh, I'm gonna go to Councilor Kiley and then I'll go to Councilor Jameson. I guess my position, I just wanted to really make a statement and uh, that is my position really hasn't changed from what it was last week that I would uh, like to see that wall all the way complete division of the two, two businesses. Uh, so I would just uh, hope that maybe uh, uh, you and your group could make that consideration. Councilor yeah. Jameson. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. The uh, thing that's kind of been curious to me about this whole process is that clearly you build a wall in between, you make two different businesses, it's a go, um, no problem generally. Uh, you've, you've kind of crept along this little line trying to get to the edge and the council's pushing you to make this, you know, get to this line, so to speak, and come back as a normal two different businesses. Um, help me understand your motivation from starting where you started and creeping slowly only because you're forced to. Was it money? Is that what you were trying to say? Money and, I mean, to be completely honest, and I don't know if council liked the answer, but, um, you know, part of it, we like the indoors so people don't have to go outside. Uh, we thought for safety, you know, having locks, having cameras that people have to go through, um, you know, we run a business that's very service oriented. Uh, we're, uh, they've, my client's been very successful. Uh, they do follow the rules. I mean, we've never had an alcohol violation. And one thing people like is not having to go outside. Um, so we wanted to keep it inside so they could go from one to the other, you know, not just stepping into the other, but, you know, uh, going through the doors. Uh, the bathrooms were a big expense. We were trying to avoid that, um, you know, because for us, there's no benefit if, I mean, we don't want people carrying alcohol across to the other area. It's not, and that's not our business. That's not what, what we push at all. I mean, drinking isn't, isn't a big part of video lottery. Um, and I mean, in terms of why we kept trying to do it was, you know, we thought there were some efficiencies. I think having uh, two people at the front, you know, when you can cover for one another, one employee goes to the bathroom, there's still someone watching if there's any problems, if anyone needs to be tended to. Um, but we've kept going because city council says that's what they want to see and ultimately um, you make the, the final decision and we have to abide by it and, and we willingly do that, so. Thank you, Brian. Councilor Jameson, sir. One last follow-up. You mentioned earlier, and I know you attorneys are pretty sensitive to which words you use, but uh, the comment was asked about the number of employees that would be uh, working if there were two separate businesses, and that was clearly two. And I think the, uh, the question was, well, what if it was this design and I think you made the comment of uh, it, it could be two. Uh, I, I would think that, I didn't realize it until afterwards, somebody had mentioned to me that you could, under your proposal prior, you could have one employee effectively managing two businesses. And that, that slipped past me before last week. And I'm getting a sense that if, if this were the uh, setup in an attempt to save money, you could get by with one employee. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, I was supportive last time you guys were here, but I'm I'm following the herd here on the, the separating the businesses out and and doing it doing it right until some other state law changes or something. But yeah. I encourage you to come back, and I think you'll find a cooperative council if you follow the rules. Okay. Councilor Kuski, thank you. Um, I guess I'd like to hear from Ron Bell and Building Services. There's a difference between having one big building and in, in how we. Um, code enforcement and that type of thing, or building codes and that type of thing. So if you just weigh in, Ron, advantages, disadvantages, that type of thing. Well, one, one thing that's happening, when this first came in, there was a complete wall based on the ordinance that was in effect um, when the permit mm. uh, was applied for. And that wall was a two hour fire barrier. Mm. And based on the fact that you have an Ocula of 90 on one side, an Ocula of 70 on the other side, they didn't have to sprinkle didn't have to provide an automatic fire extinguishing system. Mm. Um, with the wall being gone, they've come back with the proposal to provide an automatic fire extinguishing system. As far as the bathrooms, um, again, the previous plans had all the bathrooms over on one side uh, with uh, water closets, urinals, the, the, the correct amount of fixtures. But now with this plan, we've got separate facilities for each sex, which again is code conforming. So the only, the only question that we had last time was dealing with the um, fact of electromagnetic locking devices. Uh, the doors on both sides are gonna have to be egress capable. 
even, even if you do have electromagnetic locking device, the doors have to be operable from the inside for egressing at all times. So with this, this will still meet the building code. Well, Council, very, very good discussion again. Uh, Councilor Erickson. Thank you. I will make a motion. One thing that I do want to say, just one final comment, is that that wall means a wall with no pass-through within that wall. It does not mean a complete firewall with another door that can go back and forth. So I just want to be very clear on, on what that means. Um, I'll make a motion to delay this until next Tuesday, May 17th, um, for final consideration based upon the new plan, the newest plan that we will receive prior to that date. Second, Karski. There's been a motion to um, move this or re defer. Uh, to defer. Thank you. Sorry, Thank you, defer. Councilor. It's been a motion to defer this item for one week uh, based on the assumption that there will be a plan provided with a wall that, can, that creates two separate businesses. And that has been seconded by Councilor Karski. And if there is no further discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Item 14. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilor? Can I make a motion to reconsider item 14. Second. I have to read Can we it read it? We'll just read in the record real quick. Hurry. No, no, good job. Thank you. Trying Item 14 is reconsideration from the May 3rd, 2016 City Council meeting, new 2016 retail wine license, including video lottery terminals for Commonwealth Gaming and Holdings, Deuces Casino 3.5, 5115 East Arrowhead Park Parkway with conditional use permit 4148, 2016, being approved on March 3rd, 2016, pending final inspections per fire, health, and building services. Pretty good. Councilor Erickson. Thank you. You're I'll welcome. I'll make a, a motion for reconsider, please. With the same caveat as the prior one? We have to, we have to vote on it. Just, oh, gosh. Now, thanks for coaching me, Councilor Erickson. Second. Nice job. Thank you. It's been a motion to reconsider. It has been seconded. Thank you. Um, uh, a roll call vote, please. I, Council members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillors, oh, yeah. is there anybody in the audience who wants to speak to this item? Council, Councillor Erickson? Based on the previous conversations on almost an identical item, I would move to ha defer the reading to um, Tuesday, May 17th, um, with the same stipulations as the last conversation. Thank you. Second, Rolfing. Councillor Erickson has made a motion to uh, defer this for one week based on the same caveats as the prior one. Seconded by Councillor uh, Vice Chair Rolfing. A roll call, please. Council members Karski? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Um, Council? Um, it is officially, hmm, it is officially uh, 8.47 p.m. 8.42, my gosh, you're right, it's 8.42. It is officially 8.42 p.m. on Tuesday, May 10th, 2016. Uh, the following counselors have served this city with incredible uh, honor. And uh, they've served the city well, and they've sacrificed in an amazing way. Um, those councilors are Council Member Dean Karski, Council Member Kermit Staggers, Council Member Kenny Anderson Jr., and Council Member Greg Jamison. Uh, would anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Uh, at the same time, recognizing the service of those four counselors. So moved, Karski. And I would recommend that we um, that we do that with a standing ovation. Well, let's uh, let's get Councillor Karski, one of those four outgoing counselors, to make that motion to adjourn. So moved. Would one of the other three want to make? Jamison. Councillor Jamison has requested to be the secondary, uh, the second on that. Uh, 
All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? That motion is passed. Thank you, Council.